Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of PHT TV. I'm Jason and I'm Trey. We're, today we're gonna be unboxing this beast here. This is the Klipsch horn. It is the only speaker in the Klipsch line that has been in production since the beginning. Since 1946, this has been in constant production. I Changed said, a little bit over the years, but it's still the same speaker. Still solid and still amazing. So let's get this guy out. So as you can see on, the front, see on the front here, it does tell you how to unbox essentially. So always want to do this guy with two people. Um, I imagine it's possible to flip it over and everything, definitely doable, but you risk damaging the speaker, you risk damaging yourself by breaking your back. They're, so, they're heavy. Yeah, always use two people. So we're gonna set this down on the back here. As always, the first thing you do see is the instruction manual. We're gonna set this guy up right and then we'll go over that a little bit more. This guy is beautiful. The grain is really pronounced on that. You can feel it, not just see it. Yeah. And we are in. So before we go any further, let's talk about what's in this little black booklet here. It's basically the same as the rest of the Heritage line, so. Or the rest of the Heritage line is the same as this. There's that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so first off, we have the genuine grill material that is used. You have your congratulation on your purchase for the Heritage loudspeaker purchase. And then finally, we have our Klipsch horn manual, our Klipsch horn owner's manual. Inside this is essentially just how to hook up specs and everything to that effect. So behold the king of the heritage line, the Klipschhorn, produced in 1946, never out of production since. So let's talk about what's new about this guy. You know, it, <laughs> the appearance of the speaker has changed a little bit over the years. Oh yeah. Quite a bit since 1946. <laughs> <laughs> the old pieces of plywood they were using yeah. at that time. Yeah. But some of the uh, visual things that changed on the speaker today is the feet, the, the foot, section the toe kick, kick panel is what they call it and that that kick panel has changed quite a bit it used to be an audi <laughs> now it's an <laughs> yeah and i actually talked with tony martin about that the uh, the designer on the clipshorn and essentially what the design is intended to do is make it stand a little taller and give it more presence so now with you being giving now with you having the ability to tow it out from the room, into the room a little bit more, you can see it and see all of its beauty from every single angle and it kind of puts it on that pedestal and says, look at me. But, and it kind of gives it that floating appearance. It doesn't look like it's sitting on the ground. It's like, oh, <laughs> like rising above. Something else has changed uh, is over the years is there's no longer a, a top panel on the LF cabinet. That's changed a few years ago. And this is new, if we can make this happen easily. The grill comes off on the HFS, yes. which has never happened. And previous before. generation, yeah, you leave the grill on. You never see the internals. So. Or it didn't have one if you go back far enough. You know? <laughs> so, so having that grill come off is is a nice uh, main cave visual factor. <laughs> exactly, and not just not just the fronts. So you can pop them off on the sides as well and show all of your internal components, your wire connections, and so forth. So, and, and for reference, it took us a minute to get the grill off because those magnets are good. Very strong, yes. <laughs> so it's kind of like leaving the hood up on your car, show what's inside. Yeah. Now that they have the grill off, they've actually done some cosmetic changing to the front of the motorboard on the HF section. If you notice the radius at the front of this horn, so that you don't have a blocked off square on the edge of that horn exit, now it's a radius or a chamfered edge. And that chamfered edge gives you a little better flow as it comes off. It doesn't, it reduces some of the uh, uh, turbulence that can be caused from that immediate change. Same way that you see that with the uh, with the horns, mm -hmm. they don't truncate very quickly. They radius out or, or chamfer out, the shape mm -hmm. of that. And with this, looks good too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with this out, they did update the, the high frequency driver as well as the horn on the high frequency driver. There is an internal phase plug to help the dispersion of the sound. And it, it is a very, very important part of a compression drive. Yeah, most people don't realize how important that component uh, is. You know, <laughs> Dodge made a big deal about the Hemi, Hemi engine, mm -hmm. that rounded top, right, mm -hmm. inside the motor compression to give you better compression or, or more room for, for combustion. 
that's extremely important the shape of those heads. Mm -hmm. It's because it controls that stuff. The same thing happens with a compression driver. The shape in, in, in relation to the dome versus that phase plug and the slots or openings on that phase plug control completely how that phase plug squirts sound into the room or how that speaker, that tweeter squirts sound in the room. Yeah. The higher you go in frequency, the more detailed that are more uh, uh, difficult uh, to control it is well that, that's yeah. where your horn is the higher the frequency the more laser beam it becomes <laughs> so as it gets smaller in its physical shape you're controlling it with that horn lens of a phase plug i don't know other how to say it. it's really the the horn for the super high frequency part of the horn of the driver the bass driver the uh, low frequency driver in these as well as the lascalas and the corn walls the k33 that's used in several of the pro systems as well isn't it it's in a couple of the cinema systems they actually use that in the 902 system in the 335 i think <laughs> uh there's there's a couple of systems where they use that k33 uh, driver that's been around as a woofer in the clips line for a long, long time in some way. Forever, <laughs> as far as you look well, back. What was the original K-horn? Oh, uh, it was a Jensen, I believe. Was it still a 33 though, wasn't it? Well, it wasn't a number like that. They called okay. it some, they may have called it, yeah, let me think back. We'll get into that in the history video, yeah, so stay we'll tuned. <laughs> I'll study up and make sure that I know, know that for a fact, but All I right. believe you're right. I believe they called it a 33 J. Okay. Uh, let's pop the grill back on and the I, outside, I mean, there is the new network to support all these changes, but honestly, the biggest change in this design, as you guys probably already know watching this video, is the enclosed back. So as you can see, there is, there is a back panel on this unit, uh, unlike the previous generations. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you can have it right dead center in the middle of your room, but you can tow it in a little bit. You can change the angle to make it easier to sit in that room. Right. It still requires a corner. It is a corner horn. Yeah. What, what enclosing this back does is it extends that horn to the point that the frequency, the bandwidth of frequencies that is controlled by the wall is low enough that you can get I always look for a corner when I talk about a camera. <laughs> you can get within six or eight inches of, the, of that corner, 10 inches from the apex of that corner with the, the point of the speaker, the back of the speaker, mm -hmm. and still have a congruent horn. Uh, where in the past with this tailboard had to be tight against the wall. Mm -hmm. Or else you and, lose all the low frequencies. All this had to be sealed, or you had a huge speaker that the bottom frequency was like 100 hertz. So I've tested the K-horn in an open field and looked at the bottom frequency of it. It wouldn't get below 100 hertz. Mm -hmm. It just didn't do it. It fell flat on its face because it's like taking a tuba and cutting the bell off of it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it becomes a, not a tuba. <laughs> uh, a buh. <laughs> a buh, not a tube. Or maybe no, it's, it's a tube, only a tube, a tube in the, uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah. <laughs> so. Like he was saying, you can pull it out, but you cannot get it beyond six to ten inches, or else you start losing quality as you go further you out. You lose so. the bottom end because you open a, you basically are drilling a hole in the bell of your, of your tuba. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. good when you let the spit out, but it's not good for the sound coming out. Exactly, and you can also see that it is still open on the top because it's a horn. It doesn't matter, but these are the, uh, the cables that you use. So this is the high frequency cable. This is the mid range cable and they've actually redesigned how the input works on this. So you can pop off the panel here. Trying to turn this a little bit more, don't we? Yeah, let's turn it a little bit more. You can pop off the cover here and you can see the brand new redesigned input panel. You run these through here and you can see mid out and tweeter out. So all you do, unscrew this and it does have spade connectors on it. So it's super easy just to pop it in there. Tighten her down. Yeah, so essentially what you do is you come in through the top panel, connect your mid-range and your, and your high frequency driver, and then from there they've also redesigned how the output or the input to the speaker works so you can hide it a little bit better in your home. So you plug into one of these and then, unless you're biamping, then you plug into two of these. You can actually drop the cable straight down. There's a tube to keep them organized and the cables exit from the bottom of the speaker here and you can actually hide them and tuck them up against the wall and it makes it a little bit of a prettier design. A yeah. nicer cable management. 
Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's always been a problem at the bottom of Cahorn uh, over the last few years because there was a little square out of the out of the side of the grill that allowed the cable to come out, but you could still see it easily from the side of the cabinet. Exactly. Now they've moved it back a little bit further, and it makes it a yeah. little more nice. Especially with the new ri- the new riser base, because you tuck straight down and you're under the riser base, the cable's gone. You don't, you don't see it at all. So. And there's no need for the for the uh, uh, cutaway in the kickboard or the tailboard or the side panels for the uh, uh, trim on the bottom of the, ha- of the room. What's it called? The baseboard trim. Mm-hmm. It used to we had baseboard trim cut out so in, the, in the bottom of the speaker so that you could tuck the speaker tight against the wall and, <laughs> and still cut it out. Yeah, would, wouldn't stop you. Now that you don't have to do that, the need for it's gone. So yeah. there are labels on the HF and the LF, and they're the same serial number. Yes, for for grain matching. So if you buy a pair of these, it'll help you along the line so you don't mix up the high frequency cabinets and lose that book matching, that waterfall effect going down because. If you swap out the cabinets, it won't be a perfect match anymore. Sound the same, but it won't be quite as perfect <laughs> to a degree. <laughs> Still gorgeous, but as you so nicely pointed out about my Lascala at the house. <laughs> <laughs> With all the grills back on, let's talk about those. So yeah, that is something that's changed over the years: is the the color of the grill cloths and the way it's mounted and connected. Yeah, in those previous generations, it was the flat black grill cloth. So you kind of lose it in the in the transition, especially on these on the black finishes. You kind of lose that grill cloth. Black but. or brown, or, or in the past, some of the lighter colors, but that stopped over the years. Again, history. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cover that again in the history video. So, and that about covers the unboxing of the AK6 K horn. The guy is gorgeous, and as you could see, it wasn't too terribly difficult to unbox. We had it set up pretty quickly. Uh, you can have these in your house and set up in an hour, <laughs> you know, it, if that. It, it, it really takes two people. You get a six pack, both get three. You got time to set and listen to some music. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> get you get you some time to push them in the corners and figure out your spacing as well. <laughs> so, the, you know, the, the clips horn is a speaker that is uh, that is somebody is making a conscious effort to add a piece of furniture to their room. Yes, and it is not just a speaker. It is, it is not just a speaker. It is a elegant, uh, uh, very well crafted piece of furniture. And the, that uh, sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> just because that piece of furniture does a lot more than just being a furniture, it, it isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the room that speakers like this go into typically is a dedicated room or a room that's capable because of its physical dimensions. You know, yeah. and you, I've heard of several people over the years when set in front of a pair of clip horns as set up properly where it sounds very good and come away with almost a religious experience. You yeah. Know? It, it can be, because music's so moving, emotional anyway. Oh yeah. And you get it, those chills, you it, get. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the hair on arm standing up just, just thinking about it. <laughs> because, you know, I've had that experience so many times over the years and it's addictive. Which yeah. is why there's so many people buying the product. Exactly. But, uh, My first listening experience was in the Klipsch listening room uh, to this particular Klipsch horn. Uh, and it was just, you close your eyes and you feel like you're there. It, yeah. It, That's the only way to describe it. It feels like the band is sitting in front of you. And being able to, to, to see the, the depth in the, the image, the impact from the folded horn, LF, the, the uh, dynamic range from the from this products like this you know in the clips line are, are unbelievable and this speaker in particular i mean the whole point behind this was so that he could have a symphia symphony a symphia <laughs> so he could the whole point behind the clips horn was so paul could have a symphony and a marching band in his living room yeah and you could see um if you go back to the um the tour of the museum the hope museum you can see the very first clip short ever made we actually got a shot of that and Essentially, you can also see its comparison. So what he was trying to beat, the design he was trying to beat, getting it into this, this smaller form factor, the design he was trying to beat was probably the size of this wall. <laughs> this has been the AK6K Horn Unboxing. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Next week, Trey is gonna sit down. I might actually sit down with him. We haven't decided yet. And we're gonna actually give Jim Hunter a call, the, the curator of the museum, to give us some extra additional stories to cover the broad history of the K-Horn because it is so vast. This I'm is... gonna talk history of the K-Horn. I'd rather Jim do it because I learned most of my history about the K-Horn <laughs> <with> Jim. <laughs> so. 
So yep. let's get it from the horse's mouth, if you will. Exactly. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Jason. I'm Trey, and you guys be sure and subscribe and like to the channel and tell us what you want to see in the future. And we'll see you again next week. Thank Bye. you. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of PHT TV. I'm sure, um, I'm f Shrey, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's early. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new